Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I wanted to introduce the next book in the Mega Dickens read along, which is Barnaby Brunch. So if you don't know what the Mega Dickens read along is, it is a two year long read along where we are reading all of Charles Dickens' novels in publication order. And Barnaby Rudge is I think the fifth book and we're gonna be reading this in April and May, 2023. There is no more firm schedule than that. Start when you want, finish when you want, discuss it when you want. Um, I will leave links down below to the Discord server, which is where most of the discussion for the Dickens read along is going on. Um, and I'll also leave down below the schedule and links to other videos where I've been talking about the Mega Dickens read along. We're going to be reading Barnaby Rudge over the next two months um, and discussing it. And I am very excited to reread this one because it's one of the Dickens books that I know the least. Well, it probably is the Dickens book I know the least. I have read Barnaby Rudge twice, which um, is the least times I've read any other Dickens books, except for The Mystery of Edwin Drood, when we get there, his last uncompleted novel. I have only read that once. Um, but every other Dickens book I've now read three times or more, um, except for Barnaby Rudge, which I've only read twice. Um, once as a teenager and once when I was like 22, 23, so quite a few years ago now. So I don't really remember Barnaby Rudge very well, but I'm quite excited to reread it. So today I wanted to tell you a little bit about what Barnaby Rudge is about and also give you five reasons why you might want to read Barnaby Rudge and a couple of things to be aware of going into Barnaby Rudge as well. Barnaby Rudge is one of Dickens's historical novels, um, so it's not set in the Victorian period, it's set in the Georgian period, it's set um, partly in 17 1775 and partly in 1780. In fact, the subtitle of Barnaby Rudge is A Tale of the Riots of 80, um, as in A Tales of the Riots of 1780. So the book is based partly around the real historical events of the Gordon Riots, which were anti-Catholic riots happening in 1780 in London. And we're following various characters who kind of end up getting caught up in the events surrounding these riots. Um, and these characters are also connected by a pub called the Maypole. Um, and in the place where the Maypole is situated, there was a murder that happened many, many years before, a double murder of um, a gentleman and his servant. And this murder has kind of like haunted the town ever since. Um, and so various characters in Barnaby Rudge are kind of connected to that murder. There is a young woman called Emma who was the daughter of the murdered gentleman. And there is also a young man called Barnaby Rudge who was the son of the murdered servant. Meanwhile, as always in Dickens, there are millions of subplots, including a love story subplot going on between um, Joe, who is the son of the man who runs the Maypole and his possible sweetheart Dolly Varden. And as always in Dickens, it's about how all these characters interact with each other. Um, I'm going to be listening to the audiobook, which I'm excited for. The audiobook on Audible is narrated by Jason Watkins, um, who's an actor who I like, so I'm quite excited to listen to it. Dickens just works so well on audiobook for me, so I'm really looking forward to listening to Barnaby Rudge. So, as I said, I have five reasons why you should read Barnaby Rudge. One reason is um, to see Dickens do historical fiction. Like I said, the book is not set in the Victorian period, it's set in 1775 and 1780, um, so sort of 60 years before it was written. And I feel like it's really interesting the way that Dickens looks at the Gordon Riot um, and the way that it can tell you both stuff about the time Dickens is writing about, but also it can tell you stuff about how Dickens as a Victorian was interpreting those times and kind of thinking we're much better behaved now um, and stuff like that. So I find reading like Victorian historical fiction very interesting, both for what it tells you about the time it's set, but also what it tells you about the time it's written and how people at the time it was written think about the time it was set. Dickens did write other works of historical fiction, um, most famously A Tale of Two Cities, which is set during the French Revolution, but also some of his other books are also set a bit before they were written. So Little Dorrit, for example, is also set several decades before it was written. Um, but anyway, I think that Barnaby Rudge is well worth reading like for the historical fiction element, because that's a bit different and really interesting. The second thing I think it is worth reading Barnaby Rudge for is um, Lots of adventure and drama and a lot more action than we have seen yet in Dickens. Within Barnaby Rudge there is so much drama, there's murders, there's riots, there's highwaymen. Like it's much more dramatic than the previous few Dickens we've read. I feel like it's much more action packed than other Dickens. Like obviously like Oliver Twist does have quite a bit of action in but I just, I don't know, I feel like Barnaby Rudge is like the first one that is like very, very action-y, um, if I remember correctly. But it has been such a long time since I've read it, maybe I won't find that anymore. But I feel like it is the most dramatic of the ones we've read so far. And I think it'll be a really interesting one to read chronologically, you know, thinking a lot about how Dickens is plotting changes over time and how I think he gets better at plotting over time. Like I'm interested to see how the sort of fuller plot of Barnaby Rudge 
um, measures up to the earlier plots, which have been a little bit scattered and episodic. Um, I think it'd be quite interesting to look at that. Another good reason to read Barnaby Rudge is that it has a lot of really interesting themes in it, um, themes of kind of violence and mob mentality, themes of religion, of religious difference, of prejudice, intolerance, disability, um, and of how like different environments can make people act differently in a way that maybe they wouldn't have in other environments and how people and their actions can be shaped by the environment they're in. I feel like Barnaby Rudge is very sort of thematically interesting um, and is kind of trying to look at a lot of interesting things I suppose. Another reason to read Barnaby Rudge, which to be honest is a reason to read every Dickens book, is that it is full of many interesting minor characters. Um, it is very much an ensemble piece. It's called Barnaby Rudge, um, but Barnaby Rudge is not really the central protagonist. There are a lot of characters in Barnaby Rudge, um, all of whom are important in different ways. Like I said, Barnaby Rudge is a bit hazy in my head, but I remember really loving Joe, who I think I mentioned is the son of the guy that runs the Maypole. Um, and I also remember disliking Sim Tapetet, but in like a really fun way. Like I really enjoyed hating Sim. So I'm looking forward to encountering him again. I feel like as far as I remember, the villains in Barnaby Rudge are really, really interesting. Um, but like I said, it has been quite a long time since I've read it. Um, I did go back and watch my What the Dickens video on Barnaby Rudge back from like 20s. 16 or whatever on earth it was um, and at that point I had reread Barnaby Rudge quite recently so I guess that was when I last read it yeah seven years ago oh I've been on booktube for a long time um but yes and in that video I said that I really loved the character of Hugh and I found him a really interesting compelling villain I do not really remember who Hugh is um because you know it's been seven years since I last read it um and the rest of Dickens just takes up a lot more space in my brain because I've read those more times. Um, but I am really excited to rediscover him because yes, um, yeah. I feel like the character development in Barnaby Rudge is also quite good, but it's just been a while since I've read it, so we'll see. Finally, at number five, a slightly silly one, but a good reason to read Barnaby Rudge is that one of the minor characters is a raven called Grip, who is Barnaby's pet. He just has a pet raven and that's kind of cool, so yeah. But before I finish the video, there are also two things I just wanted to mention that I think it's worth being aware of going into reading Barnaby Rudge. The first one, which is definitely the main one, is that um, the character of Barnaby Rudge has what I suppose today we would call severe learning difficulties. Like I said, the book is not that fresh in my head. I'll be interested to see what I think of it now. From memory, I thought the presentation of Barnaby was like, in general, quite good. He is a fully fledged, interesting character who is neither a villain nor a victim. And his presentation I thought was all right the last time I read it, but it has been a long time. However, like the way the other characters treat him and also the terminology used to describe him is quite uncomfortable for a modern reader. Throughout the novel, Barnaby is often referred to as the idiot. And that was like, an accepted term, like a medical term, I suppose, in the Victorian period. But like, it is kind of hard to read that as a modern reader. Now the word idiot is mostly used as an insult, but the insult came from like, a medical category, I suppose, rather than the other way around. So within its context, um, Dickens is not like using that term in a derogative way, I suppose, but like also as a modern reader, it is a bit hard to read. So I think that is worth kind of being aware of in Barnaby Rudge. And like I said, it has been quite a long time since I read it. So I'll be interested to like see what I think of Barnaby Rudge as a character and how he is explored um, and what his presentation is, I suppose, on this reread. And then the other thing I did want to say, which I think is worth also being aware of in um, Barnaby Rudge, is that um, I mentioned earlier there is a character called Dolly Varden, and basically Dickens really fancies Dolly Varden. And every time Dolly Varden comes onto the page, Dickens like tells you so. And it's just a bit weird. Like I feel like Dolly's presentation, as far as I remember, was just quite odd. It was a mixture of like lots of like sexualizing objectification with like odd infantilization and it was just a bit like dodgy um so i feel like i didn't enjoy that the last time i read it and i'd be interested to see if it still bothers me as much this time i don't know i feel like the last time i read barnaby rudge i just spent a lot of time being like dickens come on we get it you think dolly's very attractive but like you wrote her as a character so like stop being weird about it okay i'm gonna stop rambling about barnaby rudge now do let me know down in the comments are you gonna be joining in with the read along this month are you excited to read barnaby rudge have you read it before and that's all for now thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.